Good morning. This is Pastor Dave, and I'm speaking to you from my office at Hernando United Methodist Church. This is the uh, 21st day of October, Wednesday, and this is my weekly hump day message. So I'm looking forward to sharing it with you as we go through this time. Will you uh, join me for a word of prayer? We bow our heads and meet our Lord in prayer. Loving God, we come to you today. We know that you are always with us. We know that you love us and care for us so deeply. And we thank you for the many blessings that you give us. We ask now as we are given these thoughts to, to ponder and to embrace and internalize that, that, that you would open our hearts and that you would uh, surround us with your spirit to continue to, to move us forward in the way that you would have us go. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, I tell you, uh, we this week on Monday, we had our charge conference, um, and it was a Zoom conference. So it was about 140 uh, people that were on it, uh, several churches from, from the district. And, and before we talked about the exciting ministry opportunities and conducted the business of the conference, our district superintendent, Reverend Edwards, presented a devotion that was based on Jeremiah 29, 4 through 7, and 11 through 13. Now, I have to say that, uh, that I was moved by her words as she interpreted the prophet's words to the Israelites when, when they were in Babylon. Uh, this is something that, that we can ponder and I think live with in a difficult situation where, that we are in right now. I, I, I will be using her presentation and uh, I'll thank her for that. It was, uh, it was something that I think we all could ponder here. We, we'll, we'll be using her presentation in my meditation, and I've kind of taken that as a starting point and as some foundational pieces. And then, of course, I've added some of my own things to it that will, will speak to us here as well. I'm going to share with you a reading from Jeremiah, um, the 29th chapter, and uh, 4 through 7 and 11 through 13. Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord of, of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives that he has exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. Build homes and plan to stay. Plant gardens and eat the food they produce. Marry and have children. Then find spouses for them so that you may have many grandchildren. Multiply. Do not dwindle away and work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you to, into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future, to give you a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So when you think about this, you know, about this idea of being, being stuck in places, uh, dealing with abnormal circumstances, danger lurking all around. Um, you know, Reverend Edwards shared that as, as, as of Monday, in the eight counties that are the district, there were 50,000 COVID-19 cases. There have been greater than 1,200 who have died. Many of our connected families, friends, our church brothers and sisters uh, have been infected. And many have died, sadly. If you follow the numbers and science, you see the trends. When we first began to experience the pandemic, uh, I created the following mantra in my email signature. Be smart, be careful, be courteous, be helpful, stay healthy, and keep the faith. I still think that, that this is very much an appropriate uh, thing to keep running through our minds as we uh, go through the days that are now and that lie ahead. You know, so it, we are, it seems, in a strange land. We, we are doing different 
and unusual things. We're, we're wondering what the future will hold. We believe God wins, of course. It's just kind of hard right now. So how will we be acting and living in these circumstances? We are all still Christian, and we want to be expressing God's love and salvation for all. We are in a changing situation. I still buy into the commitment that that we love each other, and it is expressed by doing no harm to others, doing good for others, and the kingdom. This is not about endangering others with an infection that can be fatal. I am excited about what we have done at Hernando and the opportunities. Those who attended Sunday's relaunch received the face mask from, that was provided by UM Communications that says, love your neighbor. Um, and, and really, you know, that's who we are. Uh, we're about loving our neighbor. It's not about endangering others. At the same time, we need to be who we are as Christians. And I think when we look back at Jeremiah, what we find are some things that come out of there that, that, that were, when they were being spoken to the, the Israelites that were in this difficult situation, the prophet brought them a word that would help them get through it in a good way, help them move past it. So let me share some points that come out of the scripture that we read. What speaks to us from the prophet? So Jeremiah in, encourages the Israelites to be patient, to be vigilant. Yes. I think when we, we see this, he, he's, he's saying, live fully where you are. Be productive. Be forward thinking. Focus and work on peace and posterity in your location and in your situation. Pray to the Lord. Stay connected to God. Be the present voice of God where we are. Um, we may be stuck. We may be in places. We may be in different kind of places. We may find ourselves getting opportunity and challenges, but we need to be the voice of God where we are, and, and we need to live our life fully for the Lord. Okay. And then we realize that God has plans for us. He has plans for good. He has plans for a future and a hope. So embrace God's presence wherever you are. God is with us and is, is where we are. And we are to be God's presence and voice. I'm gonna just, it's important to recognize that that's just such a true thing. So God has plans for us, my brothers and sisters. Uh, let's each be all that God wants us to be. Let's be patient and let's be vigilant and live fully being God's voice in the situation we are in. We will move God's church to, to the full potential that our Lord has for us. We will love God and we will love one another. So let's take a better new normal into a future that glorifies God and builds the kingdom. Amen and amen. As I finish this up, I, uh, I need to say uh, just a couple of thoughts real quick on, on the, our current situation uh, uh, that we're in right now, which I think we need to be living to our fullest. We need to be uh, the presence of God where we are, and, and, and we need to be seeking God's guidance. And this is something that uh, I think is just very, very current. And, and I want to encourage you uh, about this important current event and engage, engages us and represents us living fully where we are, being the present voice of God where we are. And it really is a simple little thing that I'm going to ask you, uh, please vote. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I know who I'm voting for, and, but I can't tell you, and I'm not going to tell you. You have to, you know, you have to do due diligence and make your decisions. And I do want to say, though, that the right to vote is the foundation of any democracy. Chief Justice Earl Warren 
for example, wrote in Reynolds versus Sims 377 US 533555 in 1964. If you remember, there were some issues going on then that, that needed to be, uh, that were causing problems that needed to be changed. But remember now, the right to vote freely for the candidate of one's choice is of the essence of a de democratic society and any restrictions on that right at the heart of of uh, representative gov government do not be intimidated my brothers and sisters or feel demeaned in any way be strong and courageous in what you stand for and glorify god in it be led by the spirit by God's spirit and let your decisions and thoughts be guided by how we think as Methodists. We think a little deeper about things. We process things. And, and one of the ways that we're guided is by the Wesleyan quadrilateral, quadrilateral I can say it, approach, which brings together then scripture, tradition, experience, and reason. And, and, and as we think through things, we, we, you know, we do a process of thinking at a little bit deeper level. Be smart with long-term thinking. Uh, vote, my friends, with, with the joy of freedom and having a choice to make a difference for the good of the whole. Exercise your right to vote. Please vote. Amen and amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, God bless you.